Today I'm going to be talking about all the amazing books that I read during the season of autumn. I read an abundance of just amazing gothic classics and horror books as well as historical fantasy and quite a lot of fantasy as well. I have a very good combination of books here to talk about. Like always, I'm going to leave timestamps in the description box in case you're not interested in a certain genre, you can just easily skip around. The first classic I'm going to talk about is Dracula by Bram Stoker. I adored this book. If you've been watching my vlogs for a while, this is not a surprise. The first half of this book is one of the greatest things I've ever read. The ambience is something that I truly cannot explain. It's something that you have to read so you can feel it for yourself and you can make your own thoughts because I feel like everyone captures different things in this book. I, for example, love whenever authors write about the weather because the weather can really influence our story. For example, in this case, when they were talking about Nina and Lucy and they were both in Whitby and it was raining, it was pouring rain, it was so windy and cold. And because it was so windy, the rain kept splashing into the windows and this splash into the windows was the same sound as Count Dracula knocking on the window and it's just everything connected in a way that whenever an author knows how to include the weather and just the natural elements into a story i love that also today is very windy here where i live so it's a perfect time to talk about this book i annotated this book so much some of the annotations are for the historical context and then the annotations are just for the beautiful prose of Bram Stoker. Also, I know a lot of people say that this book was inspired by Carmilla, but I do not think it was inspired by Carmilla. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying that, I'm sorry, but after doing a lot of research, I think it was either inspired by Vlad the Impaler or the Countess Elizabeth Bathory. The Countess Elizabeth Bathory, her story is just truly something else i started reading a non-fiction book about her but i just had to put it down because honestly what i've read that was enough in my opinion i didn't want to read any more about her story because that woman was truly terrifying another classic that i read was dr jekyll and mr hyde and other days of terror i read the penguin classic editions that also included a body snatcher olaya a chapter on dreams and diagnosing jekyll growing up i never heard about dr jekyll and mr hyde maybe it's because i'm spanish and it's not in our culture but i had a different idea of what the story was about on my good read I actually talked about it like with spoilers so if you have read the book you can go into my goodreads and see what my actual idea of the book was I don't want to spoil anyone so I'm not going to say it here but I have it on my goodreads so with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde I liked it but I feel like it was such a short story you cannot really critique something that short then the body snatcher I adored this short story I think it was because during this time I was actually doing research about the resurrection men and the body snatching in Edinburgh so it was just the perfect time to read this short story the end they really got me not gonna lie so yeah the voice natural was a really good short story but then olaya i fucking hated this short story well not hate it because hate is a strong word i just had a strong dislike for this book i guess so this book was actually said in spain so that's something that i like since i'm spanish as the story progressed i didn't know if i was reading about vampirism incest about a dream i had no idea it just kept getting weirder and weirder and usually i'm up for that like usually i don't mind weird stories but in this case i felt like i was reading a fever dream in the worst way possible now thinking about it this is the type of story that will stay with me for years and years and maybe in two years i will read the story and i will, and i will really like it so maybe in two years you will hear me saying i love the story of olaya or maybe you will hear me saying i still hate the story of olaya who knows we shall see and then with a chapter on dreams and diagnosing jekyll this is more of a background story about the story and about and about robert louis stevenson so this is more like a non-fiction part of the story and then in november i read 1001 nights in english it's most commonly known as arabian nights and the translation that i read was by richard francis barton so where to begin with this book first of all when i was a kid i read the kids version of this story so i don't know why i just grew up thinking that these were children's stories don't ask me why, because they're the opposite of that. That book is very erotic, sexual, sensual. Just it has the most 
adult content you can find in the book the two sisters in the story are amazing like i love both of the sisters all the men are like real kids honestly all of them have one brain cell and they don't know how to use it this is a classic that they think was published around the year 800 so, you know it has been a while since its publication but still the talk about women is just the most horrifying thing the folklore and the roots of the stories are indian persian turkish arabic and i think it has like more countries but overall these are the type of folklore that you read in these stories i'm very happy that i read it and honestly it was a wild ride but it was a good classic honestly i had a lot of fun reading it well i had fun but at the same time i was very disturbed for a lot of the book i'm going to remember reading this book for a long time then for for a second i thought it wasn't filming oh my god okay then for historical fantasy i read babel by arif kwan everyone on booktube is talking about this book and everyone is loving this book i did like it but i sadly didn't fall in love with this book i recently talked about this in one of my vlogs that i adored the dark academia essence this book had i love reading about their everyday life in oxford studying not going to sleep because they have to study then being excited about learning and then the classes and everything that they were doing in the classes those are the type of things i love reading in dark academia and also all the descriptions the topics on racism and colonialism i think they were truly brilliant like erf kwan really did an amazing job writing those the historical context i think it was also really good I know some people complained that they weren't talking in Victorian English, like they were talking in a very modern English. I didn't mind that, like I feel like that's something that it's okay. I had so much fun having this book because I learned so many new things about languages, history, colonialism as well. The only thing that I personally didn't love was the fantasy elements in this book. I thought this silver working was something very interesting, like a very interesting concept, but the execution and why I read about it, I wanted to read more about the translation and how this silver working was going to help with that. I don't know, I guess it kind of felt flat for me. Translation and languages is something very interesting to me because I'm trilingual, I grew up being bilingual, and then when I was a teenager I learned English, and it's very weird knowing that some words and sentences in one language mean nothing in another language and just knowing that so many things get lost in translation and i don't know like translation languages words literature those things are fucking amazing and i love them so even though i didn't adore this book i had a really good time reading it and i liked it so i would 100 percent recommend reading this book if you haven't already please do it this one honestly I, I don't know how to classify this book i'm just going to include it here this is gallant by v schwab this is a young adult kind of middle grade fantasy paranormal horror-ish gothic-ish i know this is an unpopular opinion but i had a great time reading this book i bought this book when it came out in march i started reading it in march i couldn't really get into it because i had very different expectations of what the book was going to be and i decided to break down for the time being i picked it up again during september knowing that this book reads very middle grade knowing that i had a great time reading it Bea schwab is such an amazing writer her lyrical prose is truly brilliant like it's something so satisfying to read whenever i was reading sentences i just kept daydreaming with this story and it inspired me a lot for so many stories that i want to write and for photo shoots that i want to have and then i also read this and companions by Lora porcel i sadly didn't like this book it wasn't a terrible book by no means like it was it was fine but it was fine in the sense that i would not recommend it the premise of the story is very interesting there's three different timelines two of the timelines are set in a spooky haunted house which is called the bridge one of the timelines is during the elizabethan era and the other one is during the victorian era and then the third timeline is years after the victorian era in that house in an insane asylum you kind of see the development in the haunted house and in the silent companions and with the madness that is erupting in that house and the premise is very interesting it's just that the execution of the story wasn't anything too special and i sadly didn't love this book yeah, bye.
for history, I have three amazing books to talk about. The first book that I'm going to talk about is The Witches, Salem 1692, A History by Stacey Schiff. I read this amazing book in, I think it was like the end of September during October. It's one of the best witchy books that I've ever read. Non-fiction witchy book. This book talks about Massachusetts during the late 17th century and the madness that erupted in during that time with witchcraft. My camera ran out of memory space, so I don't know what's the last thing I said. So I'm just going to summarize my opinions in this book. It's truly heartbreaking to read about these women and what they had to endure. Some of them, well, many of them gave birth in prison. They had to raise their kids in prison. A lot of them sadly lost their kids in prison as well. And then by the end of the witchcraft madness, all the men that led the Salem witch trials, they would all like just disappear from Salem so they wouldn't get any repercussions of for what they did and that fucking sucks because none of them paid for all the pain that they caused to everyone and then i also read the greatest battles in history written by the spanish history channel this is my fourth or fifth book by the spanish history channel i adore how they write their history books and how well they're written and how easy it's for me to learn the new information and then i also read that radium girls i actually didn't know this story i didn't know any of the names of the women that saw from this. Now, thankfully, I know the stories. I know the name of the women. The Radium Girls were women that worked in a factory painting telephones and different things with a paint that contained radium. When they were painting these things, they would lick the brush so radium would get into their mouth, their tongue, and basically their entire body. In this book, we follow several women and what happened to them. I read Daisy Darker by Ali Alice Finney. This summer I read Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Finney as well. And I really enjoyed that book. So when I saw that she recently published another book, I wanted to pick it out. This book was set during Halloween night, so that was very fun. But something that I do not really like about this book is the way they're promoting it because they're comparing this book to another very famous book. So by just comparing this book to that book, you already know the plot twist and the ending. So, you know, I didn't really have like a huge plot twist because I already knew how it was going to end. The ending was a little bit anticlimactic. It's not the best thriller I've ever read but I really like Alice Finney's writing style so I'm going to keep reading her books because I have fun reading her books. The other day I went to the library and I found a graphic novel of Homenage to Catalonia by George Holway. This is in Catalan, Homenage a Catalunya. The entire graphic novel is in Catalan and it's an adaptation of the non-fiction book by George Orwell. I've been meaning to read that book for a long time since I'm Catalan and this book talks about the Spanish Civil War because George actually fought in the war. From what I've read here, I'm very excited to read the novel because I think I'm going to have such an interesting in time reading it because there's just so much to unpack in this story and being from Spain being someone that has family that actually lived the war curious to see everything that George Orwell has to write about this time in the war especially since he fought in the war I read the sequel to Berchan, which is Us Against You by Frederick Backman. Do not know if I'm going to continue with this series. I like the books, like I do think Frederick Backman is an amazing writer, but they're just so depressing and I'm in a point in my life where I don't want to read about depressing books for the sake of reading depressing books. Then for memoir, I read Reasons to Stay Alive. He's the author that wrote The Midnight Library. This book is not going to help you in any way to overcome sadness, depression, anxiety. It's not going to help you, but it is going to help you feel less alone. Depression comes in many different ways, in many different forms. Everyone experiences depression differently. The way he was talking about depression, there's a lot of things I could relate to. I love reading memoirs and I love reading about the inside of other people's mind because they truly help you find another perspective into your own life a lot of the times. Then for true crime, I only read one book and it's Mindhunter inside the FBI's elite serial crime unit. I have to say that with true crime, I'm 
reading less and less of true crime and also I'm watching less and less true crime TV shows and movies because we've come to a point where glamorizing and normalizing these things. We should not normalize serial killers. The person that wrote this book, which is John E. Douglas, I believe, he was a very important person because he started something that is really helping understand sociology and psychology and just criminology nowadays. So I truly think he did something amazing. This book was published in 1995 and it was also published by a man who grew up in the 20th century. Sensibility when it comes to explaining sexual assault, abuse and those type of things it's not really there like he's very blunt and straight to the point with things that were very hard for me to read but i'm not complaining i'm just saying that like this book is very triggering in so many ways i actually tried to read the sequel but in the first five pages i just I decided I'm going. I'm not going to read it because I, I cannot do it. <laughs> this book is a mix between criminology and his memoir. So if you're not interested in this man's life, maybe don't don't read it. Also, this book inspired the Netflix adaptation of Mind Hunter, with which I also started watching. And after seeing how graphic and violent everything was, I stopped watching it. We do not need that much of a graphic detail with true crime, you know fantasy i read quite a lot of series the first books that i want to talk about are in the grisha first universe at the beginning of october i read the lives of saints it's a book filled with folklore and mythology in the grisha first universe Lee Bardugo is amazing with writing folklore i wish she would write more i know she also wrote the languages of thorns and i also want to read that book because life of saints was amazing honestly one of my favorite books written by Lee Bardugo and then a few weeks after I read the entire Shadow and Bone trilogy, Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, Rain and Rising, I first read the books at the end of either 2018 or 2019. Um, my second time reading those books, I had such a good time. It's one of my favorite YA fantasy trilogies. And then I also sadly read the Old Souls trilogy. I actually read these books before the Shadow and Bone trilogy, but... <laughs> Oh my god okay so i read a discovery of witches the shadow of night and the book of life by deborah harkness i acquired the first book in 2019 i think 2020 2021 2021 i think and i read it and i didn't like it if you like very cheesy intense romance this trilogy is for you and also very possessive male stupidity this book is for you. When I first read this book, I didn't really like it, but the book stayed with me for a long time. And that usually happens with a lot of books. So whenever that happens, I just give myself some time and then I reread them. In this case, my second time reading this book, I had fun. My second time reading this book, I had fun and I'm very glad that I did it. And then I continued on with the series and my fun stopped there. This book is set during autumn and winter in Oxford. What more can I tell you? That's one of the best things to read about. And then they also go to the countryside of France. My second time around reading this book, the romance wasn't that annoying, so that's good. But then as I progressed with the series, in the second book, they time travel to the Elizabethan era, which was also very fun to read about. But then Matthew, which is the male main character who is a vampire, and those I didn't say this, the main characters, the, one of them is a witch and the other one is a vampire. Matthew, who is the vampire, he kept getting more and more possessive and he just kept getting worse and worse. And then by the time we arrived to the third book, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but like so many, th so many things happen that make no sense, they have no correlation, but also the time travel was so badly done. I don't want to sit here and just talk bad about these books. I'm not going to do it. Let's just say that I'm glad that I finally read them because now I know that I don't want to read them. <laughs> and then lastly, I reread Harry Potter and the half Blood Prince and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. These books will always be my comfort reads. They will always bring me so much joy. Thank you so much for the wisdom in the world for existing. I had such an amazing reading season. I'm very happy with all the books I read. Some of them were better than others, obviously, but overall, I'm very happy. My good reads is always linked down below in case you want to read my more in-depth reviews. And yeah, that's all. I hope you guys liked this video and I will see you very soon. Bye!